Hey, what's up? In the last video, we were able to get the navigation working on the account settings activity. So I can press the back arrow, go back to our profile, or I can press on the menu, take us to our account settings. And we have these two options here, edit profile or sign out. So right now I'm going to set up the navigation for those two. So these are going to be fragments. So we're going to use a, a fragment state pager adapter. If you guys aren't familiar with the fragment state pager adapter, I think I talked about it earlier, but I can't remember. Um, but anyway, this is what you want to use to inflate fragments if you have a lot of fragments. A fragment pager adapter. So fragment pager adapter. Uh, this this is what you want to use if you have tabs. Yeah, yeah. Actually, now I remember. I did talk about it in the tutorial for I think the home activity. But anyway, uh, fragment pager adapter is for tabs because it will it will store the tab fragments in memory. But we want to use a fragment state pager adapter if we have kind of any if you have any other scenario, which is the one with the, that we're going to be dealing with right now. Because right now we don't know how many options we're going to have in the future. Right now there's only two, but if you look at actual Instagram, they have you know a, t a big list of options here. So I want to give you guys the option to be able to add more things to this if you want to. So we'll get started by creating uh, a utility class. I'm going to call it uh, Sections State Pager Adapter. And now that I think about it, I'm going to open up the home package here. And I'm actually going to drag the Sections Pager Adapter into the Utility folder because that's kind of where it belongs. It, it doesn't belong to the home package because any, any of these packages will be able to use the Sections Pager Adapter. It's not going to change. So that's where I'm going to put it. So we'll close that and close strings. And this one's going to be a little bit more complicated than the fragment pager adapter because it's going to have more functionality. So I'm going to create a fragment uh, or extend fragment state pager adapter. And we can uh, actually, I can just click here and go to the light bulb, which should pop up at some point. Come on, light bulb. Come on, light bulb. Okay, it doesn't want to pop up. I'm just going to do it manually. So Alt Insert override methods and I need get count and I think get item is the other one that's required get item there we go and we need our default constructor there we go so now the red goes away yeah so I'm gonna I'm gonna create quite a few global objects here for managing the fragments so the first one's gonna be a list and this is just gonna be a list of fragments so I'm gonna call it m fragment list so equals new array list and the second one is going to be, and some of these aren't going to make sense right now because it's going to be, these are going to be used for later functionality in the app. Um, but I'm just going to put them in here now just so we have them. So m fragments equals new hash map and private final, I'm doing, oops, private final hash map. This one's going to be string and integer. And this is going to be m fragment numbers. Private final hash map to uh, integer string m fragment names. So the reason I'm using all of these is I want to be able to get the fragment number, the fragment name, or the fragment itself if I have if if I have anything. So uh, this hash map stores has fragments as a key and will output an integer. So I, if I have the fragment, the fragment object, I can get the fragment number. This one is if I have the fragment name, I can get the fragment number. This one is if I have the fragment number, I can get the fragment name. And then this is just a list of fragments. So yeah, basically I'm just, I wanna be able to get anything if I have one of the variables. And if this doesn't make sense to you right now, just wait till later videos when I actually apply it and it'll make sense. So now let's create a new, actually I guess I can, change these right now so get item will be m fragment list get position and then this one will be uh, m fragment list dot size so those those are done those are out of the way let's create all the other methods down here the first one we're going to need is a method to actually add the fragments to the list so I'll do I'll call it whoops private void add fragment and it'll take a fragment fragment and then it'll just be m fragment list dot add fragment but we also need to add to our other list so I go uh, m fragments dot put 
Uh, if it's a hash map, you use put instead of add, but it's the same thing. You're just kind of adding it to the hash map. And this one will be fragment and then mfragmentList dot size minus one. So this is this hash map right here. You're storing the fragment as the key and then the value is the, inte the integer or the fragment number. And so the fragment number is, in this case is gonna be the size of the list minus one. Hopefully that makes sense. And then we're gonna do fragment numbers dot put. Uh, this one will store, oh, actually here we need to pass a name too. So uh, fragment name. So then here, uh, we'll take the fragment name as the key, and then it's going to store the fragment number. So just like, just like this up here. So same same thing as the above line, but instead the key is the fragment name. Here the key is the fragment object, and then here this one will be whoops fragment names. Same thing dot put, and then now the 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 the, the, the fragment number is the key, and here the fragment name is the value. So there we go. Now we're going to create some methods for getting those parameters. So this one is going to return a fragment number. So get fragment number from a fragment name. So if I have a fragment name, I can get the fragment number. So if fragment numbers dot contains key. So this, this is how you check a hash map for if something exists. It's going to have a little bit more space here. Um, I, I do I do dot contains key and it's gonna check for that fragment name and if it exists then I want to return uh, fragment numbers dot get that fragment name if it doesn't exist uh, I just want to return no because that fragment doesn't exist and so let's write some notes up here returns the fragment with the name pram and at param being fragment name. So now I'm gonna copy this and do another one. And this one's gonna be uh, get fragment, actually I can call it get fragment number again, but this time I'm gonna get the fragment number from the fragment object. So fragment, 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 change that. So it's the same thing, get fragment number, but it's an overloaded function. So this one, if I passed it a string, it, it would know to check it this way, but if I passed it a fragment, then it would check it this way. So same thing as up here, just getting the fragment number, but instead of passing it the name, I'm passing it the fragment object. And we're gonna do, oops, one more down here. And I'm gonna do get uh, fragment name, and from, it's gonna output a fragment name, and I'm gonna give it a fragment number. So fragment number. So m fragment names names. If it contains this fragment number, then it will output uh, the fragment name. Okay, that's it for this class. Um, if it's kind of confusing to you, it will make sense in later videos when I actually use these methods. Right now, you're probably thinking. Uh, you're just confused because you don't know what I'm going to use them for, but later I promise it will make sense. So we can close the sections state page adapter, and we're going to create a couple new classes for the fragments. The first one's going to be uh, edit profile fragment, and it'll extend fragment, and we need to insert, so alt insert on create view, and we can delete the super, and it's going to go into another fragment. I'm going to home fragment here. And I'm just going to copy this whole thing because that's easier. And let's see, what do I need to change? We're going to need to create the layout files. We haven't done that yet. It's going to throw the log in here. And let's go and close the home. Uh, close. Actually, that's fine. I'm going to copy edit profile fragment and paste it in the profile package. And this one I'm going to call uh, sign out fragment. And just change the tag here for now. Now I'm going to build those. Now I'm going to make those two layouts. I'm not going to build them yet. I'm just going to do some uh, dummy layouts for now. So go to create a new layout file, and this one's going to be fragment edit profile, 
And I'm not going to put anything in it yet. We're just going to close it and we'll copy it, paste it into layouts. And this one's going to be fragment sign out. Just so we have something to actually inflate in these layouts here. So fragment and profile and fragment sign out. Okay, let's close uh, fragment edit profile and let's close fragment sign out. And now let's set up our fragment at, um, manager in the account settings activity. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to create a method uh, private void. Let's do setup fragments. And it doesn't need to take anything. And then let's go up to the top here and we'll create another variable. Create a um, section state pager adapter. I'm going to call it. I'm just going to call it pager adapter. And I just realized that I forgot to put in the view pager widget inside of activity account settings. So let's go into activity account settings really quick here. And right at the top here, we can do include uh, layout and we're going to do our view pager widget. So close that. We can just reuse this because this, this view pager is just going to be a general, it's just a container. So we, we're, we're just using a container for the fragments. So I'm going to st stick this uh, snippet at the top here. Then we're going to go back to account settings activity and I need to create that view pager widget. So uh, view pager, view pager, and we're going to create one more widget and it's going to be a relative layout. Uh, the, the reason for this uh, will be apparent in a second. So we'll do that and then I can actually go into uncreate and instantiate those widgets. So I'll go view pager equals view pager find view by id r.id dot container and the relative layout relative layout find view by id r.id dot this is going to be rel layout one and that's going to be this relative layout right here so you're probably wondering why I did that it's going to make sense in just a second so let's go down into our setup fragments method and I'm going to go uh, pager adapter equals new sections state pager adapter and I'm going to go get support fragment manager. Then, then we need to add those fragments to the pager adapter. So call our add fragment method, which it's not coming up because I forgot to make it public. So we'll go into our section state pager adapter and we need to make the add fragments method here public. And now we'll go back here and it should show up. Yep. And so we'll go new fragment, whoops, not fragment new edit profile fragment and the fragment name I'm going to go get string r dot string dot uh, edit profile and then it's going to be pretty much the same thing for the other fragment so add fragment new uh, sign out fragment and then the name will be get string r dot string dot sign out cool so now our fragments are added to our section state page adapter I'm going to add the uh, setup fragments whoops set up fragments method up here so I don't forget and now we just need to create one more method right here for setting up the view pager so private void set view pager it's not going to take anything or no it is going to take something it's going to take the fragment number integer fragment number and this this is the method that's going to be responsible for actually navigating to the fragment so the first thing that I want to do is set the visibility of that um, that relative layout to be gone because when this gets set up I want to make sure that this screen goes away and only the fragment is going to be visible so to do that I can just set the visibility to be gone and let's write a log I can say navigating to fragment number and do fragment number and we can do m pager uh, m view pager sorry set adapter uh, pager adapter and then m view pager set current item uh, and then pass the fragment number. So this will instantiate instanti instant instantiate instantiate the view pager. So it's going to set the adapter and the fragments will get set up and then it's going to navigate to whatever fragment that I chose. In that case it's going to be this fragment, this fragment number. So now we to set the fragment we would uh, it's going to depend on what list item we click on down here. So we can do our uh, list view set on click set on item click listener new on item click listener and so now I can say navigating to fragment uh, position 
fragment number position. Then all we need to do is do set view pager and then pass the position. And this is going to refer to whatever position because uh, the way that we set it up is we added the edit profile one first, then the sign out. And so here we added the edit profile first and the sign out. So this is going to be like fragment zero. This one will be fragment one. And it'll be the same thing here. So fragment zero, fragment one. And actually, I want to change this naming convention. I want to do fragment and fragment. So I'll just paste that there, paste that there. Let's go into our strings file. So go to strings, and this is going to be sign out fragment and edit profile fragment. Okay, close that. And let's run it and test it. Okay, so we'll navigate to the profile, go to the menu, and click on edit profile. You can see that it inflates the fragment and it makes that relative layout invisible. So now we can go back to sign out and same thing. So it's working the way it should be. We can check the log too. Uh, oh, it's showing Firebase stuff. There we go. So we can see it's navigating to fragment one, which is the sign out one, navigating to fragment zero, which is the edit profile fragment. Cool. So in the next one, I'll actually build the edit profile layout. Uh, I think that's probably all I'm going to do is build the edit profile layout because it's a pretty big layout. And yeah, so I'll see you guys in the next video.